My name is Mary Snyder. I'm a senior at Hamlin. I graduate in May 2018. Um, I'm a triple major in social justice, sociology, and women's studies with a conflict studies certificate. Through my summer research, um, I wanted to look into how other institutions are addressing toxic masculinity um, through different prevention programming as well as um, how they are engaging men on their campus and so or male identified individuals. In the rape culture that we live in we know that statistics are one in four, one in five women, uh, college women, um, and they say, theorists say that um, part of uh, what con what is contributing to that is the role that men play um, which is uh, within toxic masculinity, masculinity and how men are um, essentially socialized. Um, men have also been kind of left out of the conversation and um, that's partially due to the societal framing of uh, rape culture and, that, and rape and sexual violence, domestic violence, um, everything that encompasses and falls within that um, because it's been framed as a women's issue um, and so men are not always at the table. My project um, specifically falls within social sustainability. So um, sustainability is essentially like conditions, condition, cr conditions that we create that go and make it so that people can thrive um, long term. Um, so with that, um, essentially with rape culture, you have perpetrators who are victimizing people, um, and if people are hurting other people, and we we've had this issue go on for decades um, with the continuation of that then our society as a whole can't thrive and people can't thrive so um, that's how mine specifically relates to social sustainability because it's also looking at different prevention programming and stuff like that um, that can be implemented hopefully to try and combat um, and change the culture of rape culture I guess for me personally, I look at like ways I can personally make myself sustainable um, because I do, because I'm a sexual assault advocate, I'm a domestic violence advocate, and a lot of what I do is a lot of heavy emotional labor. The practice that I do is I am a huge advocate for self-care, um, and that's like something that anyone who goes into any form of social work, any type of social justice work, um, should try to kind of ingrain within um, their everyday practices. So within self-care there's two types of self-care. So there's the reactive type of self-care and then there's preventative self-care. So preventative self-care for me that is uh, like cleaning my room once a week. No I'm not actively stressed in that moment and that's not what causes me to clean my room. I'm cleaning my room so that I don't get stressed later on. Um, same with like for me I make time for my uh, friends and family because for me that is very important for me in order for me to keep going and not burn out. But then there's also the reactive type of uh, self-care. So reactive type of self-care specifically is when you get really really stressed, really really overwhelmed, what do you do? Um, and it's different things that go and relax you. So some people will take a bath. Some people, I personally, I light candles and I will go and watch TV or read a book or something like that. Something where I go and uh, get a little bit of alone time and just can process whatever is going on and uh, relax. And so, um, but it's uh, self care is very individualistic. So what works for some people doesn't always work for others, and it you kind of need to figure out what works for yourself. Uh, the work that the Hedgeman Center does as well as the Wesley Center um, as well as even just having like disability services um, having the sustainability office um, which they started doing composting and that kind of stuff is really important as well um, but then also I feel like to an extent even the professors on campus um, at least within my departments I can't speak for every department but um, they very much encourage student sustainability um, where they want you taking care of yourself um, and I feel like they take care of themselves because that's also another I would say job where you need to make sure you're doing like self-care and taking care of yourself.
just about every job I do. Um, sustainability is there because a lot of what I focus on is like social change and looking towards the future and that kind of stuff. Um, and so with that I feel like a lot of our conversations kind of revolve around how do we keep doing this type of work, how do we push on. Um, because especially like if you're working towards institutional change that can take forever. Um, and like for instance like there's no guarantee that I will see a change in rape culture within my lifetime. And so I kind of feel like the whole idea of sustainability is kind of always there because you need to examine that in order to kind of accept that like you might not see that social change within your lifetime. Results of my research are coming in the spring.